Hi everyone. In this part, the goal is going to be to build two virtual machines. One is called the target VM and the other one is called a debugger VM. For the target VM, the goal is to be able to run binaries into it so we can analyze what is happening. We can debug what is happening. For instance, we can analyze a malware, we can analyze an exploit. For the debugger VM, the goal is to be able to push batteries from the debugger VM onto the target VM automatically using SSH. Also, we will be able to build our own binary from C code before pushing it onto the target VM. To build these two virtual machines, we're going to use a Python script to make it efficient and help you build them automatically, even though some steps are going to need some manual work. Okay, let's get started. So before we actually install the two virtual machines, uh, I advise that you actually download the repository for this course, which is dbg3011 advanced WinDBG. And so the script that you're going to be interested in is setupvm.py, because you're going to have to install that script on both the debugger VM and the target VM. But please download the whole repository, not just that script, because we're going to need the rest of the material later on in, in the training. So the first thing to, to say is that we have our VM built on a template VM, which is going to be Windows 10 1809. And the idea is that we will download that zip and extract it and then build our two VMs, the target VM and the debugger VM. The VM by default has a password as noted in, the, in these slides. So P capital and ending with an exclamation point. Let's first start with the target VM. So we un extract the zip and we double click on the OVF. It's going to ask us to import the VM as a new VM, which we named target VM. And we want to have only one network interface. Uh, we're going to start with uh, the interface being host only. So it's not connected to the internet. It's mainly because we want to avoid these um, auto updates for that particular VM and we'll enable internet access after during installation. We don't need like fancy RAM capabilities, four gigabytes is enough. Generally, I like to set up a number of cores just to support like um, testing multi-threaded applications, stuff like that. So yeah, before we start installing stuff on it, this is basically the, the target VM. So we see four gigabytes of RAM, two uh, CPUs, each having two cores. And we see that by default, it has host only for the network adapter. So we start the target VM. What is starting, uh, the, the thing we want to do is we want to install Python 3 that we can download from that link. And then we want to run our setup script uh, into an elevated prompt. And we're going to have to basically run that script several times each time to uh, uh, process certain steps. Because we're installing the target VM, we're going to actually select our target one and just follow instructions from the setup script. Okay, so we have our VM now. So we use the password to log in. So here I've copied Python onto the target VM. So I'm going to install it now. We're going to add it to the path. And it's customize installation. Then I install it for all the users in program files and hit install. Okay, so as we can see, Python has been successfully installed and close that. The next step is to actually bring our setup script onto the VM. So we're going to start a CMD. I'm going to just going to add that to the taskbar because we're going to use it a lot. We start a CMD as administrator. And we're going to go into users, IE user, desktop, and just start running our setup VM script. We select one because we're building our target VM. So now we can see that it is telling us to change the network interface to NAT because we've successfully disabled the, the auto update. So we do control D and just change host only to NAT. So now we can see we don't have a connection yet. Okay, so now we're connected. So now we can rerun our setup script and process additional installation. Again, we select one. So while it's installing, we have a couple of things we can do. We want to configure 
the actual language, if you have a different keyboard than the US default one, you want to be able to disable auto shutdown of the virtual machine. So it's easier to deal with it. And then we want to disable the password requirement at boot. So to do that, we're going to language settings. Then here we select our new language. So in my case, I have a U UK keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> and now I can select my new keyboard. The next thing is to disable auto shutdown. Power and sleep settings. And just change that to never. Both of them. And the last thing is to go into net PLOS and then just untick the users must enter a username and password to use this computer. I'm going to have to use the password here twice. And click OK. OK. So now we can see that the script has successfully installed the Windows Linux subsystem, it's asking us to restart and rerun the script. So let's restart. Okay, so now we have restarted our virtual machine. We're going to continue installing software. We run our CMD with administrator privileges. We go into user, IE user, desktop, and continue installing it. Again, we select one. So while it's actually installing Ubuntu, we can see that what it is installed, what we'll have to do is basically to run the Ubuntu command and then create a username named user and then the password set to user as well. And then what we're going to have to set up is SSH into this Ubuntu environment. Basically, we'll have to generate keys for that SSH server running on that target VM so it is working properly. And then we'll add trusted keys to the SSH server so it allows a half-coded key that will be used by the debugger VM. So we are providing a key pair in the SSH-config folder. The private and public keys are labeled target VM and they are keys used by the debugger VM to authenticate to the target VM. The reason why the PPK and the pub files are named target VM is because a lot of people use a different public and private key pair for each host that they authenticate to, in which case the keys are named after whatever the remote system is. So it can be confusing at first, but this is how people generally do it on all of their systems. So to summarize, the keys in the ssh-config folder are keys used to authenticate from the debugger VM into the target VM. We use sudo ssh keygen dash A to generate the SSH server keys on the target VM, which are different from the public and private key pair to authorize to authenticate to that server. The public private key pair used to authenticate are the keys used by any user in order to authenticate when connecting to the target VM. So here we are authorizing a specific key pair in the authorized key file to allow the future debugger VM to connect to it. And we do that by pasting a hard-coded public key from the SSH config folder. And finally, we are setting the right permission for the folders and files to allow the SSH server to work properly and securely. And then we are going to be able to start the SSH service and then allow the service to go over the firewall. Also, please note that you will have to actually restart the SSH service each time you reboot the target VM because it won't be done automatically. So we can see that Ubuntu is being installed and now it's telling us to run the Ubuntu command and to create our own user. So let's start our Ubuntu. Again, it's going to take a few minutes to install Ubuntu. Okay, so now it's asking to create the user. So as we're going to create the user, user. And for the password, we're going to also use user. So now we're going to set up SSH. So we're going to use sudo ssh keygen-a. Our password is user. 
Then we are creating a SSH folder and we are going to modify our authorized keys. So here you can paste the content of target VM pep authorized file. We use a hard-coded SSH key because that's the one we're going to use into the Visual Studio environment on the debugger VM side. Then we change the permission of the SSH folder and finally of the authorized keys. And now we can start our SSH service. Here we allow the firewall, the access of the firewall for the SSH server. So now we can exit the Windows subsystem. And again, we're going to rerun the setup script to see if there is anything else we need to install. Again, we set up the target VM. As you can see now, uh, the update has been installed and it asks us to restart the computer and rerun the script. So after the VM has restarted, you may be asked about the password again. So if that's the case, you may have to again disable password requirement at boot. So we're going into net PLOEs and then unticking this. Okay, so we're going to rerun the, uh, the installer script in an CMD. Going to user, IE user, desktop, and we just run setup. Okay, so now we can see that everything has been installed and we are good to go. So the last step we want to do is we want to change the network interface of our virtual machine with control D. We can change the network adapter to host only. And finally, we can shut down the virtual machine. So the last thing we want to do is do a snapshot of the virtual machine. So we do control M and then we say installation. So now our target VM is installed. So now that our target VM is, is configured, we're going to do the same for the debugger VM. So again, we're going to extract our, our zip and double click on the OBF to import a second VM, which we're going to name debugger VM. In this VM, we're going to set up two network interfaces, one to connect to the internet called NAT interface, and then the other one host only interface so it can interact with the target VM. And for this VM, we're going to set up more RAM because we're going to install a uh, different software like the debugger, disassembler. So eight gigabytes is nice. So the first thing we want to do is again, is we want to set up the keyboard, uh, disable auto shutdown and disable the password requirement at boot. So if we access our debugger VM, we see eight gigs of RAM, we see the two network interfaces, uh, let's put it. Okay. So now can configure the keyboard similar to the other VM. Can disable auto shutdown. I'm going to select my keyboard and now I'm going to disable password requirement at boot. The next step is to install Python. So here I copied Python, installing it now, adding it to the path, just as in installation. Installing for all users in program files. So we also want to install Java. And the reason for that is because we're going to use Ghidra. And so to install Java, you need to download it from uh, the Oracle website. You need to create a, an Oracle account, but it's free to do so. And you end up having a JDK executable. 
go inside the JDK. Just use the default installation. So now we can confirm we have both Python and Java. The next thing we want to install is WinDBG Preview. So you can either follow uh, found it by browsing on the browser or just searching on the Microsoft Store. Just click get. It asks you if you want to sign in. You can just say no. WinDBG Preview is installed, so now we can launch this application. And we can even pin it to the taskbar for later. So the next thing is we're going to run a setup script again, similar to what we did on the actual target VM, and we're going to have to install a few things. So we will run our administrator CMD. Then we're going to user, IE user, desktop, and then run it. So in this case, obviously, we're going to use the target 2 for the debugger VM. So we can see while trying to install Ghidra, it's actually telling us that it didn't find Git because it's not in the path. So even though it's not in the past yet, it was actually installed in the background. So if you just exit CMD and just rerun it. Again, we're going to see user rerun the script. This time it's, it's finding Git and it's continuing to install RedSync. So now we can see the script said, all done, you're good to go. Just as a safety measure, we're just going to rerun it one last time to make sure everything was installed. And you can see everything has been installed successfully and you are good to go. So the last thing we want to do is we want to copy the tools folder inside the tools folder. We see that Ghidra, RedSync, and SysInstallers were installed. So we're just going to install, copy all the actual files that we'll remove later. And the last step is to basically shut down the VM and do a snapshot of it. So to do a snapshot of it, you do Control M and then installation. Okay, we have our target VM and debugger VM configured. Let's do the next software installation. Thank you.